Welcome to the Collecting Keys Real Estate Investing Podcast with your host, Mike DeHaan and Dan Austin. From wins, losses, horror stories, and tactics for optimizing your business, Mike and Dan take a real, uncensored deep dive into the ins and outs of running a full-time real estate investment and wholesale. What's business. going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 20 of the Collecting Keys Real Estate Investing Podcast. Uh, first off, I will say... It, I can't believe we've already done 20 of these. Maybe doing like four of them a month. Is that like, what, five months? Four I was just going to say that, that 20, math. 20 is like a round number, and it's kind of high. I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, wow, we stuck with something for 20 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, well, well everyone's, remember when we were so, talked about starting this, everyone's like, don't even bother telling anyone about it until you've done 10 of them because <laughs> right. you know, you're know you probably not going to do any more than that. Right. And sure enough, here we were in 20, and I made my first official uh, – social media posts from like my personal thing promoting oh, this there you go. Uh, yeah. today. So, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I feel like we got a groove now. We're going to yeah. keep it going for a little bit. Yeah. So felt confident throwing that out there and actually got like some decent feedback from people that were like, didn't realize that we had this and, you know, we got a little subscriber. Well, I guess you can't see subscri subscribe uh, subscriptions, which is silly. I don't know why podcast analytics are terrible. If anyone's wow. like a podcast wizard and knows how to track analytics i'm a data junkie and i'd love to chat with you we can track downloads which i don't really think is a valuable metric because honestly who downloads a podcast if you're not going on an airplane or something i do <laughs> do, do you really oh, I, I don't it, think auto, it just auto downloads for me yeah i'm always oh, prepared I, you never know when you're in a black spot or black I, I, spot. I don't think i've ever downloaded a podcast so i'm not going out of service somewhere yeah it's a super bad practice because every once in a while i have to like delete like 100 gigabytes <laughs> worth of voice data which yeah is a lot. they're not <clears throat> small but i know but so it's not like a true um count of listenership but um I don't know. That's like the only thing that you can track, I guess, across oh. everything, which just seems really, really odd to me. Well, do you know how they, um, this is a stupid story, but how they track how, how much people watch on cable TV. How do they do that? I don't know. They have like in like some areas of the country, they have like these black boxes people have in their house. Like, like they give them like the news or the, whoever. Oh, I've, yeah. I've actually heard this before. Don't, don't they actually yeah. like pay them too? To, like, I don't know if they pay them. Like, Maybe they, data. Yeah, maybe they do, but then they use that number of those people, which is a very small number compared to the 300 plus million people that live in America. It's like maybe 3,000 people, and then they estimate viewership for the entire country based on that. It's kind of a silly thing, but that, that it wasn't that just like most stats though. Like when right. any the media does right. anything like that, you right. know, they'll be like, "Oh, the Gallup poll, you know, the <laughs> Donald Trump is 100% going to win the election," and, yeah. and they interviewed 1,000 people in rural Missouri. Right. You know, yeah, exactly. it's like, it's like, that's they, not they a interviewed all statistic. the people with Trump hats on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. At a, at a, at a rally. Yeah. And then they're like, this is absolutely the blanket statement we're going to make based off that. God. So I know, that's funny. Um, but yeah, so made that and got some good feedback was good. And also too, I felt this was a fitting number because we have had our largest week that we've ever had, um, in the business. I mean, like as of right now, officially signed around I me, mean, assuming that you get the the little pack of them, are those officially signed? And we have a hard, hard verbal. Yeah, they're they're signed. Listing agreements are out to them. And Listing, nice. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so that's offic officially 11 signed contracts in, was it Thursday today? So we're back to last Monday. Was that like 11 days? So that's a contract a day for 11 days. Yeah, that's I'll really good. It's been crazy busy too. Yeah, I know that the guys have been absolute champions taking everything in stride. They were working until like 9 p.m. pretty much every day last week. And then I've been running all over this week just getting, um, you know, stuff verified and, and working with sellers and getting processes going. And yeah, it's been it's been crazy because we got some I guess some of the, some of the contracts we got their listings. So they're a little bit different from, you know, like our wholesale stuff, but they're still revenue. Um, and we got a. You know, one that we're doing was called a novation agreement, where basically we're partnering with the seller to flip the house. Remember when we tried to do novation agreements? We didn't even call them novation agreements <laughs> when we first started, and we couldn't we're, do it. Yeah, well, well, it's, it's funny because I remember, I remember the first time we pitched that to yeah. those sellers. It was yeah. that huge house with that lawyer that was an absolute dickhead. Oh, that remember guy! Yes, the, oh. the divorcee. He was such yeah. an asshole. He was, um, and. uh 
the crazy thing about that house too is that house was awful and they Bad. listed it for way too high of a price and ended up selling it to some dentist who apparently just wanted to burn six hundred thousand dollars um <laughs> there was it was it was so bad but uh we, we, we like pitched that to them and i remember we came up with it we're like well we know they're not gonna accept their offer what if like we partnered to flip with them and we just like <laughs> we're on the phone like trying to pitch it and the guy like, was like work you're, you're an idiot he's yeah. like i'm absolutely not doing yeah. that <laughs> yeah. but I mean, apparently the there's did need a lot of work though it was need, like a hundred thousand dollars of work it did right. yeah and apparently there is a term for it it's called a novation agreement that's with an n um which basically means that yeah, you partner with them and it outlines the conditions of what that agreement looks like and how everything's split and it becomes a recorded document on title um so you it's enforceable at the end of the day and uh yeah it's it's surprisingly simpler than you'd think and yep. for something that doesn't really seem to be talked about a huge amount i think it's a really really valuable tool and on this deal it's funny, as, as I was sort of closing the deal with the guy, um, he sort of started to spill these problems that our sales guys actually hadn't figured out that he was dealing with. And uh, ultimately it came down to the arrangement that we have with him. We're going to be making a little bit less money um, than we would have if he had accepted our cash offer, which he actually did kind of at the end of the call that I had with him. But he's going to be making about $14,000 more yep. because we're not going to be paying a lender. And, you know, so for us, it's worthwhile to do that, A, because I'd rather this dude who's kind of on hard times make some money and he yeah. seems like a decent guy. Um, but also, too, we don't have to go, you know, get a loan. We don't have to go through the paperwork I mean, we, process we of that. We can start tomorrow if we want once the once everything's it, it, signed, right? <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. As soon as we have clear title, we can start. We don't have to go through like a whole closing process for the lender and sign a bunch of documents. It's yeah. like literally just a two page agreement. And it'll be pretty cool to see how that goes. So. Yeah, and that something. worked out timing wise was perfect too. just the fact because mm -hmm. we're finishing up um, our other flip and then we're getting we're going to start we're gonna have like a little about a week off for our contractor to mm -hmm. start the other flip. But then the seller is in the ICU from what was the story on this guy? He got beat up. He, he was a yes, he was a cop and he was out on duty and he got into a confrontation and he's in the hospital. So How did that I, not make the news? I feel like I would have known that happened. Who knows, man? I mean, I'm I'm not going to say anything about that realm these right. days, <laughs> right, and even yeah. to even talking yeah. about that puts you, yeah. you know, someone's yeah. going to be pissed off that we didn't do right. it the right way. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, but that was honestly it was good timing to be able to do that and then be able to just slide right into that right away because mm -hmm. of the innovation agreement, just the nature of that process. We're able to we don't have to wait for title and closing all that crap. We can just kind of move pretty quick. Exactly. Yeah. And this would be a really quick deal anyway. Mostly just yeah. flooring, paint, and stuff, and then should be able to, you know, we're buying it. I guess our agreement with him is $400,000 and down is his. And then 500,000, uh, everything above that is ours. We're expecting to be able to sell for about 500 grand. Yeah. So assuming it's all costs are done, we should make about 35 to 40, I think on <clears> it. Um, if all goes as planned and we don't have to necessarily come, you know, we have to come, come out of pocket for the rehab, but we don't have to come out a huge amount for a down payment or anything like that. So yeah, no, it pretty, should be pretty, pretty, pretty quick. And then we can, slide right over to our lake cabins hopefully i know that. exactly and that, that was another one i'm excited about everyone always <clears throat> asks with this kind of marketing they're like you know what like you must only get crappy sort of residential properties or things like that but every now and then you know we get unique stuff i mean we bought an eight unit apartment complex off yep. of our our direct mail campaigns um you know we've done like decent plots of land that we've made mm -hmm pretty good money off of um we've gotten leads on commercial stuff we've never closed any of them but um i mean people call off those like rv parks tra uh, mobile home parks all from yeah. the same campaigns not even necessarily targeting those um and this past week we got a two pack of these they're basically like tiny homes on the lake and it's funny at first glance you kind of go and like what is this like why would anyone yeah. buy this but then turns out there's a bunch of them just like this around the lake. Yep. And because the square footage is so small, it's not going to take a huge amount to make them dialed in. Yeah. And we have a fat spread on this deal. Well, and the funny thing is, is it's just like looking at the photos, I was like, God, these things look like dog shit. Like I was like, what's the value here? But then when you, when you identified kind of where they're at and the nature of that, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay. So like, yeah, they're just like lake cabins. People pay stupid money for those. 
It, yeah, exactly. It's it's a lake cabin. It's not directly on the water. It's across the street, but they have deeded water access at a private dock. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like one of them is 340 square feet. The other one's 670 square feet, which actually isn't too small. I mean, there's houses in Spokane that are that size. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and in fact, we own a couple of them now. Um, <laughs> right, we do. But, but we do. We bought yeah. them land the seller finance in December. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they have their own, their own parcels, like they're on their own utilities. Should be yeah. pretty sweet. And I think that, you know, for whether someone wants to have them as a vacation cabin for their family or as an Airbnb, they have a lot of value upside. So, yeah. um, you know, but it's kind of funny because this is the thing that always irritates me about buyers. We get people all the time that are like, we would love if you ever find like a lake property, you know, let us know. Yeah. So we get these ones, you float it out to all of our buyers looking to make some easy money. And everyone's like, oh no, I only want them if they're on the water. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so does everyone yeah. else. Screw yeah. you. You don't want yeah. a lake property that bad. Yeah. Well, if you want a lake property, then you're going to pay double or triple that. And then you're going to say, oh, I don't, I don't play in that price range. It, 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 you're so right. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. If you, if, if these ones were on the water, instead of being, you know, 300 grand for the two of them, maybe 700 for the two of them. Right. So, exactly. you know, take, take what you can get, especially yep. these days. Yep. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, you gotta, I mean, you get, there's a lot of opportunities that we get that at first glance, like, Ooh, but some of those ones are the best opportunities we have. Because if you just take a little deeper dive and you actually look at it, you're like, okay, yeah, we can do something here and you just get a little creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's kind of been our whole thing recently has been, you know, being creative to help solve people's problems as we're going through some of these deals, because as the market does get tight and, you know, people become more and more aware of how things have grown, there's just like, you know, less opportunity to find a massive discount because the buyer pool is so big, right? Mm -hmm. And people know that. So a lot of the stuff we've been doing recently has been, um, you know, seller financing deals or like things like this novation agreement where <clears throat> it kind of ends up being better all around. You know, the guy's making more money, like just changing that mindset of you always need to go for a cash purchase, I think is going to be, I mean, it's been the key for us this past week. We have a handful that have been outside of that. And I think other people need to sort of start educating themselves and learning what those negotiations can look like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and it, like we fell in that trap when we were first new, we're like, but we pay cash and we can close in two weeks. It's like, honestly, for most our sellers, like that's rarely the the biggest issue they have right for sure yeah exactly the right. biggest issue right now i mean they don't want to close in two weeks they mm -hmm. they you tell them you're gonna close in two weeks they're horrified they're like i'm gonna right. be homeless where am yeah. i gonna go yep exactly yeah. yeah and so and then again like you're saying like cash may not be the best for either of us mm -hmm. they may want a novation agreement because it helps them out or, or seller financing or mm -hmm. any of these things which we've known about but then it's like you've got to really understand what their problem is so that you can pitch it to them in a way that they can hear it yeah, exactly. And, and it has to be the right kind of seller too. Of I mean, you know, it, it has to be a, a seller that, you know, is educated and that you don't mind being tied to a little bit. You know, if it, if it's like a crazy crackhead house, don't try to pitch them on seller financing. You know, you're going to regret that decision. Yeah, <laughs> serious. So, yeah. um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the whole situation has been very interesting as we've been going through that. And we, you know, we've completely taken like the, we close fast out of our marketing and we've been more pushing, like we close flat, like we have a flexible closing because right. that's been the other thing that people have been looking for. So like we have a guy right now that we've been chatting with and we're, we're still negotiating this. We might actually do it. We're basically, we're going to gr agree on a price and then out of his proceeds, he's going to front load us with three years worth of rent. And I then it was you know, only going to be 15 months. Did it move up? It did. He decided that that was too short. He's an older guy and now he wants three years, but he's adamant that he wants to pay us rent. He does not want to live for free. And he's yeah. like, just take it out of my proceeds. So like very realistically, what this could look like is we buy the house, you know, for a discounted price. And then we basically receive like a $60,000 check back oh, at yeah. closing for the rent for the next number of years. And then, you know, we can do a cash out refinance. You can do whatever we want. He's still going to be under lease yep. and we can kind of just let him do his thing. And we now have a free house that has an equity position that doesn't cost us anything because mm -hmm. we already collect all the rent. We just set that aside in a little reserve account and just have it pay for itself. 
Yeah, that's that honestly, I'm very impressed with the team of pulling that together because like that. Yeah, I don't know if I've heard anybody doing anything like that. Uh, well, so here's the here's the crazy thing, though. I mean, I'm glad you give credit to the team. This was this, this dude's idea. Was it really? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> as, as we were getting into the weeds of, you know, doing like a subject to or like a, you know, a rap or something like yeah. that. He basically sent in this long text message outlining kind of what he wanted. And at first we were reading it and we're like, so does he like want to pay rent for like a year? Like, I don't understand what he's saying because it didn't really make any sense, you yeah. know, and then got him on the phone and that's exactly what he's thinking. It's like his pitch to us about how to do the deal. <laughs> but that whole, uh, came around because we built the trust. We yeah. gave him different options. We found out what his concerns were, what he wanted to do. And that's where we're at right now. Um, you know, like I said, it hasn't officially been assi signed around yet. Um but uh i mean it should it should be coming around i think tomorrow is when uh james's scheduled signing is so yeah we'll see what that looks like but, that'll be cool i'm excited that'll be kind of it's it's just very fascinating <clears throat> the setup yeah. so so my understanding is this guy basically just wants somewhere to live where he and he's gonna like die or yeah he's like an old guy and he's like i'm too old to move he's like i'm tired of paying bills He's like, I just want to, you know, I want to cash out and have some money to enjoy the rest of my life mm -hmm. um, and not have to have like any liability with the house. And he wants to, but, he, but he's like, but I'm not a bum. I don't want to live for free. Well, and it's super smart because a lot of people get in that position where they go and do like a reverse mortgage or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so they get like a monthly little bit of money. And then when they die, the people laugh to the bank the whole way. Right. Yeah, where he's right. like, no, I know I have value here. I have money here. And I, I want to, mm -hmm. like you said, be able to live essentially for free by front loading mm -hmm. all that cost for himself and then have the money now instead of like just trickling out, you know. Exactly. You know, and even doing like a like a cash out refinance or, you know, selling it and getting a rental or something like that. He's still going to have the bill that he has to pay every month to yeah. live. And he's like, I would rather just not have <laughs> just not have the bill. I'm like, OK, I, I love prepaid rent. We get that sometimes from some of our tenants. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's always like a, a weird one, you know, cause I always worry about like, if there are problems and you got to kick somebody out, then you have to prorate it back and all this sort of weird stuff. I, I honestly more so worry about like when I, if I forget to go back and look and be like, when was the last time they paid and when should I, I ask them for money? You know, we have that one tenant. That's how it is. Right. It's just like, Oh shit. I haven't paid in a while. You know, like should I, is there prepaid? Yeah. Out? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're completely right. Well, I mean, that's why we have, you know, Judd doing our, our management now. Exactly. Especially when you get busy, it's it's easy enough for that to happen. So easy. Um, I mean and even when yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's a lag. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> even when uh you have it automated in some sort of payment system though, it's still easy enough to not like realize it didn't come in for some reason or another. And it just yeah. like, leads to problems. And and then like even though that'll enforce late fees and things like that, it's not gonna post notice for you. No, no, it's not. And like, it's especially if you're in Washington, you got all these stupid rules. But yeah, like I was going to mention just like in the one house like we've got like 11, I think it's like $11,000 like hanging out there. The one that we rent to the state because they're just the minutia is so thick with them to try to get it paid. You know what I mean? It's not crippling, but it's just like annoying. How has so I know I know you haven't told Judd to dive into that one yet because I chatted with him about that and he was kind of oblivious. But you should because with my one that I rent to the state, he's getting them all set up on Hemlane. Like oh, they're actually going to do that. Yeah, they're doing all of it. Oh, nice. So you should you should send him hunting on that. Yeah, He'll figure might, it out. Yeah, I might just send him on. That. I've been. I mean, I communicate with the guy every day, right? It's yeah. just a matter of like, well, what about this one? What about that one? I'm like, oh god. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Just just send somebody in there that has blinders on and just has the right. goal of collecting money and right. Judd will figure exactly. it out. Yeah. All right, Judd, you're up. <laughs> Here you go. That yeah, this is for the was it the Coza property or something. Yeah. I don't know. Or yeah, probably probably shouldn't say addresses on here. Who cares? Yeah. I don't know. There's there's a lot of houses in Spokane. You'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Um but uh yeah. That's not the only one that's been fun. I think I need some um <clears throat> This maybe I'll use this as therapy to talk about our insurance claim. This has been kind of fun. Um, um, this is good because I actually haven't heard this yet. I've seen your I've seen your text kind of in between me driving and doing stuff. Yeah, it's just been. Uh, here's what I if there's a course out there, you know, you know, DM me, let me know. But if not, we should create this course of like what to say to insurance adjusters in your first phone call so that you get what you need. 
because if you say <laughs> things wrong or like nuance, like there, I know that there's yeah. a secret. There's like a secret way to talk to insurance agents because I talk to enough people and they're like, say this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and like, that's what it is. And like on this one, it's just turning into this whole thing where, um, you know, just to recap, obviously the, the oil leak in the basement. So they had to, you know, cut drywall out, rip out flooring, rip out the toilet. And the, I mean, it got into the bathroom, the shower, like they're ripping out all of our new renovation shit, which is fine. Whatever insurance pays for it, that's going to be fine. It's going to take a long time because, you know, they're not incentivized to move fast. Right. We don't even have a budget for putting it back together because what they're doing is essentially they called in like some mitigation company. And then when they're done with it, they're just the, the insurance company is just going to write us a check and say, okay, go figure out how to put it all back together. And it's like, okay, that's kind of a problem. But the furnace. So initially I was like, oh yeah, you know, the furnace is broken. It failed. So you guys need to replace it too. And they're like, oh, we don't replace appli appliances. I'm like, what? Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, uh, okay. If they consider that an appliance. Yeah, apparently. Um, <clears throat> so oh really God. then what we, what we actually found out was the furnace itself didn't break. There was just a line that fed oil to the furnace that leaked uh, like a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically uh they tell us like well we have to move the furnace to get oil from underneath it right and i was like okay and so they called the furnace company and they're like yeah if we move that we're not putting it back in because there's no way we can fix it like it's like you can't move it and put it back it's so old they're just like we can't guarantee it's going to work so the the furnace guy's like basically like no and so i called the insurance company they're like well it's already broken so who cares and i'm like well <laughs> actually it's not broken yeah and like we need it to work and but they're just continuously like well maybe we just won't move the furnace now and i'm like no you said you need to if there's oil under there you know because like they have to actually yeah. the upstairs doesn't have oil in it but they actually have to like do mitigation up there because it's like permeated through the walls and mm -hmm. the smell i guess it's bad again i haven't been there yet and so it's just like every like turn i get around I'm like ooh, i could see light at the end of the tunnel and it's like no sorry bud we're gonna try to find a way to not pay for this all just yeah like, dang it yeah I, that, that's tough i mean it's almost like when you're getting a a home loan right from like a fanny freddy person and you gotta like give them enough but you don't want to like overshare exactly you know like like yeah. you don't want to tell them about debts or that you have or like one to show up on like a credit report yeah <clears throat> or like oh, yeah. you know side income that you make because like all of a sudden they're going to want all this information yes. just like give them the bare minimum that you need to qualify for what you're yeah. trying to do yeah, there's Imagine definitely like bank accounts I don't give lenders because I'm like, it, I don't want to explain why there's big deposits or not. <laughs> ex exactly, right? Honestly, yeah. you know, and I bet with an insurance, exactly the same. You have to tell them just enough to get them to do what you need to do and you don't want to overshare stuff. Yeah. But so like, are we going to have to replace like all the furniture and everything in that place? Uh, I, don't, I don't know yet. We'll find out. I mean, because if it's, if it's seeping up into the upstairs, there's no way it's not getting to the couch. Yeah, I, I don't know. More to come. <laughs> the, yeah. Oh the story God. will continue. You'll have an update next Freaking. week, probably. Yeah. I'll probably Maybe. try to shoot up there this weekend and actually take a look at it, you know, and yeah. see what's going on. Gonna walk in, you're gonna find like a whole crew of insurance people just like squatting there. It's all it's all ruse. Like, this is a nice house. Yeah. We're just going to live here and see how long this idiot well, takes to figure it out. The thing is, is we have the digital <laughs> lock system so I can see when they yeah. come and go, and yeah. they're not like working super hard. Of right. It's not. just like random days of the week at random times, the door gets unlocked God. and I'm like, of course, God. you know, and, and meanwhile, <clears throat> insurance has already said, we're not paying for your rent that you're missing out on. And so it's like, what the hell? So I do want it to get done on a somewhat of a schedule. If we were going to, if they're going to pay us a fixed cost of rent, I would yeah. be like, you know what, as long as we're cash flowing, let's do it right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This might be the sign we just turn that one into like a long-term rental. Maybe honestly, we could I mean, cash flow with it as a long term rental. Yeah, exactly. We already have our thirty year locked in. Yeah. Um, yeah, just let it, just let that ride. Yeah. Kind of a pain in the ass anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, always something. People, yeah. I mean, yeah, people say they want to own rental properties. This is the stuff that happens sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's part of the nature business. of the business, right? Exactly. But this is the benefit of buying at a discount. Is then like, you know, you at least have some room to move on this one. I guess this one we don't anymore because spent so much money. But <laughs> yeah. theoretically, yeah. you know, it's, it's with, still a good deal. We still got equity in it, right? You know, yeah, it's for sure. Is. Yeah. And, and stuff grows. I mean, you know, it, it's look, looking at properties that I've sold 
in the past, especially over the past couple of years. I mean, look at like the visor things now. I'm like, damn, I should have yeah. definitely kept all those. Yeah. I mean, like if, if like, the stuff that you and I have sold and then like, you know, the few flips that I did, man, if I'd kept all those, I would have, you know, multi seven figures right. more on my net worth at this point. Yes. Don't you know? buy to What do they say? Don't wait to buy, buy and wait, buy and wait. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a fine balance, you know, because so especially back when the stuff that I sold in like 2020, I needed that to kickstart this business. I didn't have yeah. any money. So, and that's led to a lot more opportunity, but even sure. then it's always like, well, what if I had just like lived a little bit leaner and like right. not needed that safety cushion, yeah. which I didn't actually end up needing right? and yep. just pushed it to the edge. And I could have still been still figured this out and then <laughs> also had that house. Yep. But yeah, you could have, you, you should have just lived homeless for that period of time. You're doing really well. <laughs> yeah. Right. I have a way better story too. About, <laughs> yeah. you know, homeless to yeah. millionaire. Yeah. You'd be on bigger, any... bigger pockets uh, by now about how I went and lived in a van down by the river. Although that's okay. a cool thing to do now. It's not, yeah. a, it's not a joke anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You would have been before the times though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah a little bit i feel like that really took off last year when everyone was started traveling during the pandemic yeah it's just like that's just like a thing and there's you know the the tiktok and instagram influencers now who you know they have i'm sure you've seen those this is like this is how i live in my camper van and they have like granite countertops in there like stainless steel appliances <laughs> It's like, I feel oh, like that's man. not when, when, when that whole trend started and people were dirt bagging it, that was not. No, what it was they, they weren't dropping to. like $85,000 to outfit this <laughs> van that you still live in a van that's still yeah. cramped and tight and you still have to shit in a bucket. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I'm sure they don't dude. I'm sure there's ones with basic plumbing of oh, some I'm kind. Sure. Now. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. But I mean, you could literally just go and buy like one of those huge, like tour buses for the same price. Yeah. Right. No yeah. kidding. That's like way a better. king. Yeah, it does. yeah. What, one of those ones that you see like old people that, you know, are traveling around on in, in random mm -hmm. places. That's what my daughter's trying to get me by. She wants me to buy a motor house. She said a motor house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, where are we going to go? <laughs> I mean, I you can see why she says that based off the neighborhood that we live in. Every right. third one has a motor home. They, they, ex right. they intentionally leave an extended side yard on every house here. She can park a camper back. There. I know. I know. She feels like she's living without because we don't have a motor house. Yeah. <laughs> you should stop abusing your daughter and, and let I her know. live a normal five mile childhood. But <laughs> problem is we use like once a year. <laughs> I, I know. Right. No kidding. But that's all right. I, you, you I do like the life hack though, of putting in an LLC and then renting it out and then you can depreciate it because it's a business. Right. And then Ooh, all the there, you go. there is a lot of tax savings associated with that. Yeah. I mean, Yes, like what tax savings? Not it's not going to directly apply to like your other income, though. Well, yeah, because it'll be it would be you're depreciating an asset, right? And so, if, like, if you can write off your other passive or active income with it, just like you can with real estate depreciation, right? Does it work on like a camper? Yeah, I yeah, I taught. There's guys in Go Abundance that are, that's what they're doing, and so <clears throat> they they use it. Like I, I the problem is it just doesn't fit for me right now. But like they actually want a camper to use, so they're going to buy it anyways, right? So it's not like they're like making necessary profit on this, but then they lease it out to like make it a business. And so they show income and yeah. then they can use that tax, the, the, the write off of the depreciation probably over like five years. So you're depreciating hundred thousand dollar asset over five years. That's $20,000 yeah. in tax depreciation. I wonder what like the net, this probably, this probably going to sound so stupid. I wonder if there's like a number of, you know, where you reach, you're like, it's a strategic move to just start buying campers for depreciation. And you just like park <laughs> them on some acreage somewhere right. to bring down your yeah. tax burden. Yeah. Like, I like don't it. Know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, guys do that with jets. The, yeah. With my, with my GoPod uh, guy came and talked to us that ha he works in a jet leasing company. And, you know, one of the guys asked like, like, who are all these people that are like, they ask you if they own the jets at least. And he's like, oh no like you know mega billionaires and and sorry mega millionaires and billionaires they buy the jets and they basically give them to us to lease out and he said a lot of them don't even use these jets they purely use them as like a tax play and then mm -hmm. just with the the revenue that it generates it kind of like you know covers the cost of the jet so they basically net zero on the jet but it's a positive because of the tax benefits because mm -hmm. when you're depreciating like a 25 million dollar jet right 
like there's a lot of depreciation you can yeah, take there totally. if you're yeah. an extremely wealthy person. Well, that's the next play. Let's start syndicating jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that, isn't that technically like what net jet is? Is you're like, oh, yeah, it's like a timeshare exactly for yeah. a jet? Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, man. So, yeah. <laughs> That, that, that yeah. can be our, our new course for our um, it's perfect segue for our instant investor program. We will teach you how to buy private jets to reduce yeah. your taxes to zero. Yes. You know, and if you're the average American person, if you're an, ult, an ultra successful American person making a million dollars a year, you will pay zero taxes because your be appreciation great. on this two hundred fifty million yes. dollars, two hundred fifty twenty five million dollar jet will be so massive. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, segue. We are in the buildup right now to launching our instant investor program on March 1st is when it officially launches. Basically, what it's going to be is an eight week program where the entire system that we have spent the last two years in hundreds of thousands of dollars of marketing and trial and error and high fives and frustrations and everything in between. We've built it into a system and we've turned it into an eight week course that anybody can come in and start basically building a system exactly like ours. Um, along with that, there will be direct access to us, including a weekly one hour coaching call where you can, you know, ask us questions about how to optimize things. We can work on me with the sales process. We can help build the business to whatever lifestyle you're looking to live, whether you want to, um, be a full-time investor and run a business like a full-on business like we do, or you just want the lead funnel to give you opportunities as a casual investor while you work your W-2. Because regardless of what you're trying to do, real estate's a lot more effective if you're buying at a discount. Yep. You know, and, and with the handful of people I've talked with in the last week, that's one of the biggest things is like, I kind of like my job. Like, I don't want to be a full-time investor. That's perfect. Honestly, it just comes down to scale. You know, you still like work your own leads. You still have chances at bat to buy properties for 50, 60 cents on the dollar mm -hmm. and tell you what you buy five or six of those. All of a sudden, I promise you're not going to care about your W2 job anymore. Right. Or like, yeah, honestly, like, and it's possible. <laughs> like we've, we've proven that you can, you can do yeah. a bunch of deals while working jobs. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I, I'm like you, Mike, a lot of guys I talk to, they're, they're working, they're even high, high, high income earners, right? In that $300,000 mm -hmm. range, but they know they want to get into real estate and they need a way to to get excess cash out of their kind of out of their basically savings account. But they also mm -hmm. know I don't want to overpay for a property. Exactly. Right? Which yep. is what they it, feel like they're doing. And so then, well, don't overpay for it, buy it at a discount. Exactly. And when you're buying at a discount or when you have a contract at a discount, you know, there's so many different exits versus, you know, like we said before, buy real estate and wait. Sometimes you don't want to wait. Sometimes you want to wholesale that deal and make thirty, forty thousand dollars Sometimes you want to flip that property and make 80. Sometimes you want to do a cash out refinance and have infinite returns on this rental property that you just burned all your money out of, yep. you know, that can only be done if you're buying at a discount, not if you're competing with all the other knuckleheads, working with realtors, mm -hmm. buying off the market and paying the $40,000 over asking price for a dump of a property. Yep. Yep. So exactly. And, and good luck and burning he, that because the appraiser is going to say, <laughs> well, you bought it on the market for this price. That doesn't count. That is one of the most untalked about things with that whole process yeah. that honestly I didn't even really realize until we started getting pushback on stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, just like the fact that it is on the market for a price versus bought directly from a seller completely screws up how an appraiser analyzes it. Yeah. You know, like they don't, they won't even recognize that you bought it for undervalue on the market because they're like, why would it have been listed for that on the market if yeah. it wasn't worth that? Yep. Like, well, it was, but now it's worth more. And they're like, mm, I don't know. I don't yeah, believe they, you. They assume it's a perfectly efficient market. And because it was on exactly. the market that the market dictated the value. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, if that program interests you um, at all, you want to, you were kind of selective on the first little group of people. Um, we want, ideally want people that are hungry to come in and want to succeed. We're not in like the phase of our mastermind course. We're just going to be pitching it to everybody to come yep. in, you know, give us money and then be a sucker. Um, so we want people that are going to come in, be engaged, like going to get after it and sort of, you know, work with us to build out this, this thing. Um, so if that interests you at all, go ahead and shoot me a message on uh, Instagram at Mike underscore invest or hit up Dan at investor man, Dan. You can also check out the details of what it consists of on the website for the program um, at instant investor 
And besides that, I mean, I'm pretty pumped for it. It's going to yeah. be, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. So I'm and, excited. And like, seriously though, like even if you're dabbling or thinking about it, just reach out to us. We'll sit down and have a phone call with you. And if it's not a good fit, we'll tell you right away. Exactly. Yep. And you know, just, it's officially launches March 1st after March 1st is going to be full price. Um, if uh, you join in before that, you're part of the first group, you get selected for that, you're going to get access at half the price, um, which will be $2,500 instead of $5,000. So that's a pretty good value right there mm-hmm. to literally, you know, 2500 bucks to skip the hundreds of thousands of dollars in years of headache that we have right. dealt with. That's and a really good get price. A, <laughs> just, just get a cut to the front of the line and yep. be competing with everybody right away. So, um, yeah. Go ahead and check out instantinvestorprogram.com. Hit me up on Instagram at Mike underscore invest. Hit up Dan at Investor Man Dan. Check out the uh, podcast Instagram if you like Collecting Keys podcast. And tell your friends. We're trying to grow this thing. I feel like I got pretty pumped up at the end of this. Yeah. So, you know, now that it's 9 o'clock at night, it's probably not the best mental space to be in. <laughs> I know, but, right? hey, got to do what you got to do. But, yeah. all right. Any last words, Dan? No, I'm good, man. I'm excited for this uh, instant instant investor program. Um, sounds like you're going to have a fun weekend this week. And so I'll see you all next week. Right on. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Please leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And check us out at collectingkeyspodcast.com for tips and guides on starting your own real estate investment and wholesaling business.